So I have a few things that are going to help me um, do this job of installing the pistons. The first, um, and it even says this in the Honda manual, is get some um, rubber hose. So this is, do it say what size it is? Yeah, 5 sixteenths of fuel hose. Um, then you can just uh, cut down the edge of it there. And what this enables you to do is shove this on the ends, the exposed ends, of the uh, conrod um, studs and that means you don't scratch either the bore or possibly even more importantly the crank um, bearing surface um, as it comes down. So you, you put them on. Uh, the next thing as well is a piston ring compressor. I've got this uh, very nice ARP 81mm um, um, piston ring compressor but you know you could just as well have um, you know, standard uh, clamp style. This is just an, a nice thing for this particular size. Obviously it only works for 81 millimeters. It's no good for anything else. But it's just a very nice way of using uh, just for this. Um, and then you need to obviously get your um, piston. I'm gonna put some lube on the bottom of the skirts of the piston. Um, and then I'm gonna drop it down. Obviously this is uh, number one, um, two, three, and four. Um, so I'm just going to get that um, all set up. So first of all, I'm just going to place this on top of here, like so. And then grab the piston con rod. This is piston number one. I labelled it number one. Um, as I know, this is if you opened up the bonnet, you obviously see the dipstick first uh, pointing towards you, um, and the uh, inlet would be at the um, back here. So the arrow is obviously helpful again. So the arrow is pointing this way, which is the same as all the bearings as well. So um, what we need to do now, you just put some lubrication on the skirts here, and then obviously take off these little nuts and get rid of the old bearings as well. So bearings, the ACL, this is your part number. Uh, okay, I'm just gonna unwind these um, nuts off. So then just take the cap off, caps off. Okay, then we can just slide the old bearing out and just push down here at the back. Old bearings out there, and then um, just set that down. The threes completed here. I will show you. So each side of that completes that, so you can't get them mixed up, which is nice. And then this side of the bearing shell as well. If we just push down That's the other side, then we get our new bearings. I'll just put a shell in now. So now the new bearing shell going in. So just make sure the tang is going in like that. So the tang's in there and then just push it down. That will locate. This is a pretty good time to check um, your clocking's also right. So this is the in there, you've got your first uh, piston ring slot there, your second piston ring slot there, and your third, which is around here. So it's quite easy to remember, second, third, and then first is there, okay? So then I can just place uh, these little legs on here. As you can see, it just goes over quite nicely. Okay, and then I'm going to put some uh, lube on the side of this skirt. And I'm going to be using the uh, Torco uh, MPZ for, the, for a lot of this. Right, so that's uh, some lubrication on both sides. And uh, just place this in here, like so.
and then you'll see hold it in place So you can just kind of put it in this position. I'll just put my hand in there, push the piston the whole way uh, down, and you can get these legs off. And these really do do um, sterling work to not damage anything. Um, so it's got the nice little slit in them. Just pull those two out, and you need to use them again, obviously. And then um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same again for um, piston number four. And uh, what I'm going to do is. Uh, this, will, this is kind of held in place now, so it's not going anywhere. But just be careful, obviously, that this isn't going to... Gives you a good view of what I'm talking about with the... Uh, see there? This is three. So you can't mix around which way the cap is. The process is the same. Bearing shell is uh, in. Uh, arrow is still pointing here. This is piston number four. And then um, I'm just going to put the same uh, lubrication again um, on the skirts. And I'll just place the... Uh... Piston in, piston at number four. Four. And it's I'm just going to spin the engine over. And again, just from the bottom, I'm just going to push up. Uh, these little things off. Don't worry, that's not blood. Um, right. And then it's time for the plastic gauge. And you saw me do that before. And it's going to be exactly the same red plastic gauge. I'm just going to lie two bits on there. So you can see the two little lines of the plastic gauge in there. And then, like I said before, you've got your bearing cap and you can just um, see the engraving, which is this way around. Also, you notice that the indent there is the same size as the in same side as the indent on the conrod end. Um, so you can just place that over there. Do exactly the same with the number four. So engraving is that side. Hello. 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 So now I've got my 13 mil uh, single hex, and I'm going to go to 44 newton meters, and I'm just going to do it progressively. So I'll start off here. And I'll just do incremental steps. It's a pretty loose for now. Just do them hand tight first. Feel the torque coming on now. It's just good this way because then you know it's even. You're not just pinching up one side, going straight to 44 newton meters. One of them. There's two. I'll do the same here. One. 
those two. Now I'm just going to undo those and then have a look at the plaster gauge. This I'm just going to again do in gradual steps. So just kind of quarter of a turn at a time. That's the tension taken off it. And again, quarter of a turn. That's the tension taken off it there. And then take the caps off. I'm going to get a rubber hammer with a bag over it so I don't deposit loads of rubber inside. I'm just going to tap on the loosened ends here. Okay. And uh, then you can just undo the nuts. Keep them in the same order. You can just get the cap off. I'm just going to pull that conrod back up and you see there's our squish. So right, we can see that the limits, I've done that in orange, is um, 0.032 to 0.050 millimetres. Um, that's if it was new and service limits 0.060. See what we've got. We're smaller than that bigger than that. So if we split the difference, call it 0.045, and about the same here, number four, that's obviously smaller than that. And then, it's hard to see, but it is bigger than that. So we'll call them both 0.05 and put it onto the table. And again, you've just got to scrape off the old um, residue. So I'm gonna get the big bits off with a non-mar. And then I'm going to just uh, wipe it over with a uh, towel. So you have a much lower level of residue on the um, bearing than you do on the uh, crank. So the crank you can obviously use the non-mar. Um, with the bearing surface you've got to be a bit more careful because you can probably even damage it with that. But you just take it off. We need to poke these down a bit because we obviously did the bearing measurements dry. But we need to poke these down a bit, get some of our assembly lube on and just um, lube up the actual bearing surface then put it back up again. So it's um, pretty simple. Just push it down a bit. You've got to be careful. So what I've done there is just lower that down, make sure you don't scratch the um, crank. And um, then I can just put the assembly lube on and then push it back up in place. Um, you can even um, place the, um, the rubber feet uh, back on, which probably wouldn't be a bad idea too. We have it, I've pushed it down, I've lubricated it, I've put these ends back on it, and then I'm going to push it back up, and that way I'll make sure I don't damage the uh, journal surface. So then uh, obviously lubricate the bearing surface, and then uh, stick it on the same orientation. So I've got the uh, engraving of three there, bottom bit of three there and then you just place bearing cap on there we go and then just get the get the little nuts and place them back in the same orientation there and there Then obviously, um, once you're done with that side, um, you just need to torque them up again. And then that's uh, one and four done. All right, then we're back up to 44 newton meters um, on the torque wrench. Just lock that off. And then uh, it's a quarter of a turn each like before. And it's the same process. Just do all of these conrod bolts. So now with two conrods connected, um, you should still be able to uh, rotate the engine. So it should be um, anti-clockwise. Uh, you rotate it, so it's kind of going this way. Um, and so I can just push. It's nice and smooth. Um, which it should be. I'm just pushing 
the uh, big end journals out of the way, just ready for me to place the other pistons in. And this is exactly the same process. The only slight complication is obviously this girdle's in the way, so you know you've got to put your um, tools in these slots here. But other than that, it's basically the same process. Then all that's left to do is to tighten these up again to 44 uh, newton meters and um, just run them down first, exactly the same as before, and do that evenly. All the bearing clearance is checked out the same by the way, pretty much. So now I want to just quickly check the um, and it spins over nicely. So we've got this, which is um, the little uh, Woodruff key. Uh, and then just get this in here, you line that up. And I don't really need to tighten anything on, I just want to check it spins over uh, nicely. Yeah, and it does, it's very smooth, there's no notchiness or anything weird, so that's very positive. And then uh, I can move on. We've got all the uh, cranking, pistons and conrods in, uh, new bearings, new piston rings, um, every, all the bearing tolerances um, checked out, and the piston ring gaps checked out. So we'll continue the build in uh, the next episode.